Hi there, this is Jude Socrates. Welcome to today's video where we will talk some more about the calculus of polar curves. So this is the second part of a two-part sequence where in the last part we learned how to plot uh, the graph of a polar equation by hand by plotting a few points and stringing them together uh, with the help of a Cartesian graph. Uh, and we also saw how to use GeoGebra to make, of course, a perfect graph of these polar curves. So today we will do the calculus part where we will learn how to look for points on a polar curve where the tangent line is either horizontal or vertical. And if the curve passes through the pole, we're going to learn how to find the slope of the tangent line or lines uh, at the pole. So we shall begin by reviewing the main example that we saw in that first video. All right, so our equation is r equals 8 cosine theta plus 3. And we started out by, well, modifying the table that we had when we only had r equals 8 cosine theta. Okay, so we copied that table. We only went from 0 to pi, if you remember. And then we added 3 to all of the r coordinates. And then we noticed that when we got to pi and we thought, oh, we're done now. Uh, no, because r is negative 5, uh, but we started at 11. So uh, even though we are facing the same direction, r equals, uh, I'm sorry, theta equals 0 is pointing to the right along the positive x-axis. Theta equals pi should be pointing to the left, but since r is negative, we're actually pointing uh, also in the positive uh, x-axis direction. <clears throat> so we are definitely at a different point. So we kept going, and we noticed that because of the symmetry of cosine theta, we are repeating values uh, backwards. So the r value for 7 pi over 6 is exactly the same as the r value for 5 pi over 6. And you can see that these numbers are mirror images of these rows. Again, thanks to symmetry. So we can finally conclude that when we do get back to, when we do get to 2 pi, we are back at the starting point 11, 0. All right, so let's go back to GeoGebra and look at those points and how we strum them together. All right, here we go. And uh, I just noticed that even though we input our polar coordinates in the form r semicolon theta, when it comes out, uh, notice that GeoGebra automatically changed the angle to degrees, okay, 30, 45, 60, 90, and so on. So I'm going to show you how to change to radians. I need to move the screen to the right, though, because... Uh, we need the uh, the waffle menu. Okay, so here we go. All right, there's a good spot. So click on this waffle menu, and then, whoops, I'm blocking the way. Uh, you want to go to settings, and then under settings, uh, go to this icon, um, and in there you will see angle unit. All right, so obviously drop down that and change to radians. Ooh, okay, so there you go. Um, let me scoot back to the left. All right, so there we go. Uh, the um, angle in polar coordinates is now labeled as rad, radians. All right, so we plotted the points um, and we labeled them alphabetically. So this is for zero, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, and so on. And you just have to follow the alphabet a, B, C, D, E, F. All right, so remember that there is a point somewhere in between E and F where R is zero, and then G, H, I, J, K, L, and once again, to go from L to M, we have to cross the pole, and we'll review how to find those two points. M, N, O, P, Q and A are exactly the same point. So let's scroll down, and there is point Q, 11, once again. 
And of course, uh, we taught, uh, we taught, we, uh, we asked GeoGebra to graph uh, the polar equation using the curve uh, command, uh, or you can just enter r equals 8 cosine theta plus 3, and it will automatically plot it as a polar curve. Okay, so let's go back to our workroom and uh, remember how we found uh, the points where we pass through the poles, rather the angles where we pass through the poles, and we're going to stay there because our main task is to look for lines, uh, sorry, points on the curve where the tangent line is horizontal or vertical. So uh, it's pretty obvious that x equals 11 is tangent to the curve at um, 11, 0 or 11, 2 pi, same thing. Uh, this point is a little bit more mysterious. What, what is that? It's about 6.2, don't you think? So let's just type in y equals 6.2. Uh, there it is. Yeah, so it's a little short. How about 6.3? Uh, maybe somewhere in between. So let's try 2.8. Yeah, that looks almost perfect. But of course, that's not scientific. That is just a guess. In the same way, um, oh yeah, there's another line here, a uh, vertical line, x equals 5, which looks like it should be tangent to the point i. But um, more interestingly, we have these two points over here where it looks like the tangent line should be vertical, and they're probably sharing the same tangent line, by symmetry, of course. So where will that be? x equals negative something. Let's try negative 0 0.5. Ooh, too, too far away. How about 4? Uh, closer? Yeah. How about 3 something? Okay, that looks almost perfect. Uh, how about 3, 1? Mm, how about 3, 2? Ooh, okay. So about negative 0 0.31, 0 0.32. But what we're going to do is we're going to look for the angles where uh, we will find that point in polar coordinates. So the angle, and of course, uh, we might as well get the R value as well. So look for the points in polar coordinates where the tangent line is vertical or horizontal. Okay, so we found that point. And of course, there, there's a twin down here by symmetry. Is there any more? Uh, yeah, how about over there? That's another horizontal line, right? So let's try y equals, and let's do the bottom half this time. How about negative 2? Okay, too high, negative 2.1, a little too low. So negative 2.07. Okay, yeah, there you go. And of course, it also works for positive 2.07. There you go. Upper and lower points. Okay, so we're going to roll up our sleeves and we're going to do some calculus and look for those points where the tangent lines are, hor are horizontal or vertical and we'll check our work in GeoGebra. Okay, let's go. Does the curve pass through the pole? So at the pole, R is zero and that is the equation that we need to solve for cosine theta. There are two angles uh, between 0 and 2 pi where the cosine is uh, negative 3 over 8 and they're in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. Okay, so we can find the one in the second quadrant directly using the arc cosine function because arc cosine lances between 0 and pi. So this is definitely one angle. And we checked, okay, plug that into the formula for R, we'll, we'll call it alpha, and we get something practically zero. Okay, round off error. Now, the twin um, angle in the third quadrant, or actually first quadrant, because it, it depends on how the curve is being traced, uh, by symmetry, the other angle would be negative alpha, except negative alpha is not between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, it would be negative 1.955. So to make it between 0 and 2 pi, just add 2 pi. Okay, 
so we'll get approximately 4.3 to 7. And that is between 0 and 2 pi. Plug it in, we can check that our R value is really small, which means that we are at the pole. Okay, so now, finally, let's get to the calculus part. Okay, so to find those points where the tangent line is either horizontal or vertical, we are going to need the conversion formula to go from r theta to x and y. So basic trig, the x coordinate is r cosine theta, the y coordinate is r sine theta. Easy enough to remember. All right, our curve is r equals 8 cosine theta plus 3. So to get x and y, we simply replace r with this. So cut and paste, use parenthesis, and like so. Okay, so that gives us x and y. Now, uh, what do we need to find horizontal or vertical tangent lines? Okay, so we will look for dy by d theta and dx by d theta and find the angles theta where uh, one, one of these derivatives is zero. Okay, now if you're one of my students, uh, we saw that in parametric curves, okay, when we, when we had x and y as functions of t, uh, it's possible that both derivatives are zero. That can certainly happen. Uh, it may not happen in this example, okay? But to be sure, we are going to look for where both are, uh, one of them is zero, and then we'll compare, okay? Uh, is there a possibility that they are actually zero at the same angle? And then we'll deal with that, okay? So hopefully that won't happen, okay? So uh, what is dy by d theta? We will need the product rule, and I don't think we need the chain rule. Okay, so uh, keep the first factor, multiply by the derivative of the second factor sine theta, which is cosine theta, so I will copy that. And then plus the derivative of this factor, so that's negative 8 sine theta, so I'll turn that into minus 8 sine theta. And uh, copy the second factor. Okay, so we will need to set this equal to zero and ask, okay, when, for what angles will that happen? Okay, so, so I can scroll nicely. Let's do dx by d theta. So dx by d theta is, so same product rule. Uh, I will keep the first factor and then take the derivative of the second factor, which is negative sine theta. So let me put a minus here and we will have minus sine theta. And then uh, we will get the derivative of the first factor. Wait a minute, does that sound familiar? We did that over here. So we already know that it's minus eight sine theta. So I can copy that here. And um, we will multiply by cosine theta. Okay, so uh, there we go. Hmm, and we will ask, when is this going to be zero? All right, so we have to solve for these two equations, and we're going to check that they don't happen at the same time. We don't have a common solution to both equations. Okay, uh, mm, uh, oh, 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 check it out. We have a nice common factor of sine theta uh, in, uh, in this equation. So I'm going to copy that whole thing. And we will factor out the sine theta. Actually, minus sine theta, I believe, would be even nicer. So I'm going to move this in front. And we don't need this one. Uh, we can't factor out the 8 because we uh, have a parenthesis there. So it will be a plus 8 if we factor out negative sine theta. And of course, uh, whoops, we will edit 
undo replacement silly so let me do x and then oops okay there we go those pesky invisibles that i'm not supposed to grab okay so minus sine theta factored out we're left with positive 8 cosine theta plus 3 from here minus eight uh minus sine theta factored out so we have a plus 8 cosine cosine theta factored over here so we can keep going and i'm going to try not to copy invisibles that i'm not supposed to okay that behave so 8 plus 8 16 cosine theta plus 3. okay so yeah we want to know when is this equal to zero so let's repeat the question over here when is this equal to zero so sine theta is zero or uh, cosine theta is negative 3 over 16. Is that possible? Yes. Negative 3 over 16 is between negative 1 and positive 1. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this is not exactly a cosine that we are familiar with, but we do know when is sine theta 0 between 0 and 2 pi. Well, 0 and pi, and, and also 2 pi, but we know that we're back where we started. So theta is 0 or pi, or uh, when is cosine minus 3 over 16? We encountered that. It's a good thing we reviewed. We will need the arc cosine function. So uh, does it like that? So how about cosine inverse? Arc cosine of minus 3 over 16. And remember how we reflected angles uh, across the x-axis. Uh, we take the negative and then we add 2 pi. So or 2 pi minus this angle. Arc cosine minus 3 over 16. Okay, so that's great. Uh, those are the angles when dx by d theta is zero okay so it looks like uh, we have to bite the bullet and solve this equation when is this equal to zero okay get back over here so uh yeah we don't have a common factor unfortunately okay however however what happens when we distribute what is in the parenthesis here. We will get 8 cosine squared theta plus 3 cosine theta. Oh, how convenient. And then we have minus 8 sine squared theta. Okay, and you're probably getting excited. Okay, oh, cosine squared, sine squared, that's 1. No, unfortunately, that's a minus. Okay. And you might say, oh, wait a minute, I also know a formula for cosine squared minus sine squared. It's cosine 2 theta. Uh, that doesn't help us because we got a cosine theta here. So uh, what you going to do? Well, uh, first let's check. Did we do that correctly? 8 cosine squared, 3 cosine theta minus 8 sine squared theta. It's always good to check and make sure that we did it correctly. So. To solve this equation, what we're going to do is we are going to get rid of the sine squared theta because everything else is in cosine theta. So that's good. Sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. Ta da! So we get plus uh, 8 cosine. Okay, so let's do that slowly. So minus 8 distributed to the 1. And then to the minus, it's going to be plus 8. Plus 8 cosine squared. Okay. And uh, what else can we do? Oh, once again, we have 8 plus 8. We have 16. 16 cosine squared theta plus 3 cosine theta minus 8 equals 0. Okay. Uh, does this fact? I don't think so. But we can use, it's a quadratic in cosine theta. 
so we can use the quadratic formula. And if this makes you feel uncomfortable, uh, let's do a substitution. Let a be cosine theta. So we want uh, 16a squared plus 3a minus 8 to be equal to 0. Okay, so there we go. There's a regular quadratic. We will solve for a, which is cosine theta, and then uh, we'll be very happy. Okay, so uh, quadratic formula, a equals minus b plus or minus, so minus 3 plus or minus, oh, I have a plus or minus right there, and I need a square root, square root of b squared 9 minus 4 times a is 16 times c is minus 8. So 16 and minus 8, okay, divided by 2a, which is 32. Okay, so uh, what does this simplify to? It is 521. So let us simplify plus or minus square root of 521. Excellent. And uh, let's see, how, how much is five, radical 521? It's approximately 22. Okay, so um, we will either add or subtract this much. 22, positive 22 minus 3 is about 19 over 32. That's between minus 1 and 1. So that's valid. Okay, minus 22 something, minus, minus 25, still smaller than 32. So both solutions are acceptable. Okay, both uh, are acceptable. So cosine theta, now let's go back, a is cosine theta. Cosine theta is minus 3 plus or minus. Okay, so we'll turn that into a plus or minus. Okay, so uh, did we see these numbers for dx by d theta? I think we would have noticed if we saw ugly numbers like that. Okay, so none of the angles for dx by d theta equal to zero are the same as the two angles that we get, I'm sorry, two values for cosine theta that we get for dy by theta, by d theta is zero. Okay, so uh, that means that where dy by d theta is zero, we can now confidently say that those tangent lines are horizontal and where dx by d theta is zero, those are the tangent lines where uh, the, the points where the tangent lines are vertical. Okay, so we checked that none of the values we got for theta are the same for dx by d theta and dy by d theta. Okay, so now we can solve for the uh, complete coordinates of the points. Okay? And of course, we will be using the equation of our curve. All right, so let's recap what we have so far. We have the main equation. When was dx by d theta zero? We have these four angles. And dy by d theta is zero for these two values of cosine. So uh, like before, we will have uh, arc cosine, inverse cosine of each angle or 2 pi minus each angle. So it's just a little bit tedious, 2 pi minus this angle or uh, arc cosine minus 3 minus that or one last point, 2 pi minus this angle.
and you glad you don't have to write this down. Well, you will have to on your assignment. Okay, so we have four angles and we will look for the R coordinates. Okay, so uh, using uh, R equals eight, cosine theta plus three, so let's make a sort of table. Let's list it out. When theta is zero, we're gonna get something. When theta is pi, we're gonna get something. Um, now, when theta is one of those, I said, do that. There you go. Just to annoy me. Cosine inverse. And I can leave that alone. And last one, we want 2 pi minus that. Okay. So uh, plug those values for theta into r equals 8 cosine theta. Now, of course, because of the nature of the inverse cosine function, uh, when you take the cosine of these two angles, uh, they have the same cosine. And we're looking at the cosine over here, negative 3 over 16. Okay, so uh, for theta is 0, cosine 0 is 1. That sounds familiar. r equals 8 plus 3 uh, plus 3, which is 11. Okay, so uh, 11, 0, we saw that. That's the rightmost point of our curve, our limousin, in case I haven't called it the correct name. Those polar curves are called limousins. More on that later. So how about pi? So this time, cosine theta is minus 1, so r equals minus 8 plus 3. We remember this. This is minus 5, uh, the, the middle point of your inner loop. Okay, so now uh, for these points, uh, we need 8 of cosine, and we know that the cosine is minus 3 over 16, and we will add 3. Okay, so that is cancel the 8, minus 3 over 2, plus 3, 6 minus 3 is 3 over 2, positive 3 over 2. Okay, and of course, uh, those that's also the same uh, R that we will get for this second angle. Okay, so we have four points in polar coordinates. So we have the full coordinates. Uh, we have 11, 0, and then we have negative 5 pi. And then we have uh, three halves. Three halves arc cosine minus 3 over 16. And finally, uh, three halves 2 pi minus. So I'm going to copy that whole thing and put in 2 pi over there. Over there. So copy over there. Okay. Great. Now we will do the same thing for our points over here. So, of course, um, learning from what we did just now, these two angles have the same cosine. All right. So for the first two angles, okay, our R is 8 cosine theta plus 3. So there it is. Let's bring it down here so where we can see it. Okay, so 8 cosine theta, we need 8 times uh, this. Okay, plus a 3. So, uh, careful, we will simplify that fraction. 8 over 32 is 1 over 4. So we have 1 over 4 over here. Notice I'm getting exact values. I am not punching in red 5 to 1. I just did it so that we can make sure that both cosine values are legitimate. They are between minus 1 and 1. So 3 becomes 12. And we get 
12 minus 3, which is 9, plus radical 5 to 1. Okay, whoops, sorry about that. Clumsy think fingers, I went to the Chiochebra uh, tab. Okay, so 12 minus 3 is 9 plus radical 5 to 1 over 4. And let's just check that the R value is reasonable. So this is about 7.9, it's about 8. Okay, so that is approximate. Okay, so for the last two number, last two angles, uh, we will change the plus to a minus. Okay, so we will recycle as much as we can, turn the plus into a minus, the plus into a minus, so 8 and 32 still cancel to 4. And shall we keep going? And we get um, minus 5 to 1. And this is still a plus 12. Uh, so now it is 9 minus radical 5 to 1 over 4. What is the R value approximately? Negative. Ooh, it's about negative 3 something approximately. Okay. So, oh wow, we have uh, an abundance of points, okay? So we have four over here, and that kind of matches, right? That kind of matches what we had, um, what we observed in GeoGebra. And we also have four points over here. So summary of coordinates, the full coordinates. Okay. So we have, this is one of our R's, and then we have the theta is the arc cosine uh, that we have over here. Okay, so this angle. Okay, I'm gonna show you something that I encourage my students to do. So uh, I will copy this down here. Okay, because those are the angles that we need. So, uh, to help with our notation, we will give names to two special angles. Okay, so the first angle that we get is direct arc cosine. So let's call this angle alpha. Okay, and the reason I didn't do this to our um, previous angles is because it wasn't so bad. It was just arc cosine minus 3 over 8. Okay, here you have the, this nasty thingy. So uh, we will get alpha and we will get another angle here, beta, which is 2 pi minus alpha. Okay, so notice that this is our alpha. So that's that. So, uh, what we will, what shall we do? Uh, go down the alphabet. Gamma is our cosine, uh, that, and, um, what's next in the Greek alphabet? I believe it is delta is two pi minus that angle. And, yeah, I think we need to make a new line. There we go. 2 pi minus gamma. Okay, so that will definitely save you on some writing. Okay? Instead of having to write this nastiness um, four times. Okay? You only have to do it twice. So that is for alpha. And then we have the same R, but for beta. So we change this into beta. Oops, sorry. And beta. Okay, there you go. And uh, let's see. For the other two angles, this was the R value. So, uh, yeah, I think I will recycle these two because the... Uh, only difference is that um, I will change the plus to minus. Okay, so that's a minus, and that's a minus, 
and this is what we are calling gamma and this is what we're calling delta okay Whew. all right so we will have those uh four points and let's go back to GeoGebra and we will plot them in polar coordinates all right so let's start off with the uh four points uh when dx by the d theta is zero we already have 11 0 and negative 5 pi those are points a and i so we only have to plot uh, minus three halves semicolon oops, excuse me and let me try this okay so here we go minus three halves and start over minus three halves and semicolon uh, arc cosine of minus three over 16 and uh, and my apologies that's what happens if you type and then move your cursor somewhere else it just freaks out i also had a minus sign here which is why it's like wait the point is not getting there i started over okay so positive three halves arc cosine minus three over 16. there's point r okay so that looks like uh, where we had our vertical tangent line and of course uh the matching uh point is where we have two pi minus uh arc cosine so there we have s okay so there we go r and s are twins and they have a mutual common vertical line. And yeah, uh, we, we, um, we plotted the vertical line, which is common to these two, and we were kind of estimating, okay, who is that X value, okay? Well, we have the um, change of coordinates formula, the conversion formula, to go from theta to x and y, okay? So let's go back to our workroom and solve our x. All right, so we are solving for x for these last two points so that we will get our vertical tangent line. x is r cosine theta. Well, our r value is 3 halves. So we will take 3 halves and then multiply by cosine theta. Well, we have a uh, cosine inverse minus 3 over 16. We have a visitor who is afraid of a fly, probably. Let me take care of him. Okay, so uh, the cosine of this angle is right here, minus 3 over 16. So we're going to copy that, and we will multiply those two together, and we're going to get negative 9 over 32 which is approximately negative 0.28. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? That is kind of where we found our vertical line. Okay, so let's check. Bingo, there's x is minus 9 over 32. So we can see that that tangent line really does pass through points R and S. <sighs> okay, so now we will look for we will plot the four points where the tangent line is horizontal. And uh, yeah, maybe we will do uh, one of the horizontal lines. Okay. All right, and we're back. So to save time, I input alpha, what I called alpha here, and the R value corresponding to this alpha. So the point is B semicolon alpha. So there it is. There is our point. And yes, it looks like that was the same point we eyeballed before where the tangent line should be horizontal. And of course, uh, the twin is the same r, but with 2 pi minus alpha. There it is. There is u at the bottom of our polar curve. Okay, so now we have to do the other pair of points which are in the inner loop 
so we will change that plus or minus so we will duplicate input and there it is so we will call this beta i hope it doesn't uh, freak out turn the plus into a minus and okay gave it a different name beta one so that's fine and the r value is nine minus so duplicate input so this will be a nine minus this time okay all right so we have a negative r value so i want you to notice something uh beta is 2.5 radians okay uh, pi over 2 is about 1.57, pi is 3.14, so this is in the second quadrant. In other words, the direction should be somewhere over here. But the R value is negative, minus 3 point something, so it's actually going to land down there at the bottom of the inner loop. Okay, so let's plot our point is C and beta 1. And let's see if uh, it'll do it for us. And there it is. Okay, yes. Thank you, subscript. Okay. So there is our point where the tangent line is horizontal. And of course, the twin duplicate input, it will be 2 pi minus beta 1. There it is, point W. Okay. So we have our four points here present and accounted for. Okay, we can do the same um, task of finding the equation of the line by converting um, polar to x and y. This time we need the y coordinate. But y is our sine theta. What we know is the cosine of these angles. So it will be a little bit tough to get an exact answer. You have to really work hard for it. You'll have to square that, subtract from one, take the square. It's really not worth it. Okay, you can definitely get an approximate answer by finding the sine of this angle and then multiplying by the R coordinate, which is, uh, I believe, this one, for example. Okay, so we have one more task to do for this video. And that is we want to find the slopes of the tangent line at the origin, at the pole. Okay, so let's do this. We want to find the slopes of the tangent lines at the pole. We will use the conversion formulas. X is R cosine theta, Y is R sine theta. We already saw this. What we're going to do is we're going to solve for dy by dx. Okay, so this was not something we did in our last example where we, will, we were only interested in dy by d theta and dx by d theta. But we will use them as our building blocks to find dy by dx, regular derivative. Okay, so dy by dx when r equals zero. Okay, here's our curve that we're working with. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply the product formula, product rule in general, okay? So dy by d theta, focus on this. We want dr by d theta times derivative of sine is negative cosine, and then plus r times the derivative, um, oh, I'm sorry, add product rule. This goes over here. So uh, we will need times sine theta over here. Add particle. Add, add. Okay, so the derivative of sine, it's even worse. Yeah, it will be r, just r cosine theta, no minus. Okay, and then we will need um, dx by d theta. Okay, so focus this time dr by d theta and then copy cosine theta and then we will add r times the derivative of cosine theta minus r sine theta okay 
So we want to know when is dy by, what is the value of dy by dx when r is zero? So when r is zero, we get the following simpler formulas. dy by d theta is just dr by d theta sine theta, and dx by d theta is just that because r is zero, these two terms go away. Okay, so now we can put them together. What is dy by dx? Well, uh, remember we did something like this with our um, uh, parametric curves uh, in class. When we have these two derivatives, we simply want to divide them. dy by dx is dy by d theta divided by dx by d theta. Ooh, okay. So that means that we will take this and we will divide by this. Hmm. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Am I seeing double? Yeah, those are the same. So they can cancel. Erase that and erase down there and erase that. So you simply get sine theta over, oh, wait a minute, what is sine theta over cosine theta? That's just the same as tangent theta. Hmm. Tangent theta when r is zero. Okay, so that is a very important phrase for the end of that equation. Okay, because we're solving for these derivatives when r is zero. So to emphasize, we want the value of tangent theta when r is zero. Okay. So when was r0 again? Well, here's our r, r. So remember that cosine theta is minus 3 over 8. So we hit the pole when cosine theta is negative 3 over 8. Okay. Uh, so we need tangent theta. Well, draw a triangle or think in terms of opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So our adjacent is minus 3. Hypotenuse is 8. So opposite, opposite must be uh, take the square root of hypotenuse squared, 64, minus adjacent squared, minus 9. 64 minus 9 is 55. All right, so we got radical 55. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, what is the tangent? Tangent theta must be, uh, what do we got? Opposite over hypotenuse. So square root of five over negative three. So negative five over positive three. Okay, but as we saw, there are two tangent lines. Okay, and again, there is symmetry across the x-axis, so the um, the other slope, and remember, tangent represents a slope. The tangent of the angle gives you the slope opposite over adjacent, change in y by change in x, okay? So we also have positive square root of 5 over 3, okay? So on that, let us draw the two lines through the origin where the slope is plus or minus square root of 5 over 3. Did you catch that? It is 55, square root of 55. So square root of 55 over 3, plus or minus. Okay, so let's go back. There we go. Yeah, something was not looking right. So there it is. Slope square root of 55 over 3 x. Okay, so there's our beautiful tangent line. And yes, see how it is hugging this portion of our inner loop. And of course, it's evil twin. Let's see, duplicate uh, input right there. And we want a minus 
put a minus over there. Aha, uh -huh. there it is. Okay, so of course, that line is tangent to this lower half of the inner loop. It's not going to be tangent to the upper half. Okay, and that's because when we pass through this portion of the inner loop, we can very much ignore the upper path, the, the upper part. It's like it never happened. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I will see you for the next one where we will talk about areas, Ooh, areas bound of regions which are bounded by polar curves. So what we're going to do there, uh, spoiler alert, we have a nice inner loop here. What is the exact area of that inner loop? All right. So until then, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.